How's it going, people? Well, you just can't resist. Want to get a little bit more done. First, Dow. We're almost done, folks. Now, that wasn't so bad, was it? All right, yes, it was. I'm sorry. It was pretty bad. Uh, but funny, sometimes. All right. We should be getting into some battles about now, if I remember right. <clears throat> Chapter 14 of the Book of Ether. <sighs> A Curse Upon the Land. Continued Strife and Bloodshed. Coriantumur not to fall by the sword. And he never does. <laughs> One. And now, there began to be a great curse upon all the land because of the iniquity of the people. Another one? Wow. Different iniquity, different curse, I guess. Different people. Yeah. This, this isn't working, is it? <laughs> all right. Yeah. In which, if a man should lay his tool or his sword upon his shelf, or upon the place whither he would keep it, behold, upon the morrow he could not find it. <laughs> so great was the curse upon the land. I hate it when that happens. I put it right there. Wait, did I do any iniquities recently? <laughs> Two. Wherefore every man did cleave unto that which was his own, with his hands, and would not borrow, neither would he lend. And every man kept the hilt of his sword in his right hand, and, wait, right hand, in a defense of his property and of his own life, and of his wives and children, that order of importance, apparently. Three, and now, after the space of two years, and upon the death of Sherid, behold, there arose the brother of Sherid, and he gave battle unto Coriantumur, in which Coriantumur did beat him, and did pursue him into the wilderness of Achish. For, and it came to pass, <sighs> mighty fine, that the brother of Sherid did, did give battle unto him in the wilderness of Achish. And the battle became exceeding sore, and many thousands fell by the sword. That was dramatic, wasn't it? Five. And it came to pass. Coriantumur did lay siege to the wilderness, and the brother of Sherid, I, he's got a name, right? Did march forth out of the wilderness by night, and slew a part of the army of Coriantumur as they were drunken. Six. And he came forth to the land of Moron, and placed himself upon the throne of Coriantumur. Seven. And it came to pass. <sighs> that 
Coriantumr dwelt with his army in the wilderness for the space of two years, in which he did receive great strength to his army. Yeah? Yeah. Somehow. Eight. And the brother of Sherid, whose name was Gilead. See, they finally gave him a name. <sighs> this had to think of one. <laughs> he skipped brother Sherid, brother Sherid, brother Sherid. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, Gil, Gilead. <coughs> also received great strength to his army because of secret combinations. Nine. Then it came to pass. his high priest murdered him. Just as he got his name. That ain't right. He just got named and now he's dead. I wonder if they'll name the high priest. I should make bets on this. Yeah. His high priest murdered him as he, as he sat on the throne. That happens a lot in this book. It's not really good to be king, is it? Ah, uh, damn hay fever. Ten. And it came to pass. <sighs> that one of the secret combinations murdered him in a secret pass. I assume they mean that unnamed high priest, too. Never mind. And obtain unto himself the king. And his name was Lib. And Lib was a man of great stature. A lot of them in his book. More than any other man among all the people. And it came to pass. That in the first year of Lib, Coriantumr came up unto the land of Moron and gave battle unto Lib. battles and stuff. Wow. Back and forth. Back and forth. <coughs> All right, now, where was I? Twelve. That came to pass. Lib did smite upon his arm that he was wounded. Nevertheless, the army of Coriatomer did press forward upon Lib, and he fled to the borders upon the seashore. Thirteen. And it came to pass. That Coriantumr pursued him, and Lib gave battle unto him upon the seashore. Fucking dramatic, man. Fourteen, and it came to pass. That Lib did smite the army of Coriantumr, and they fled again to the wilderness, wilderness of Achish. Fifteen. And it came to pass. Ooh. Better. Uh, 
that Lib did pursue him until he came to the plains, plains of Ogush. And Coriantumr had taken all the people with him as he fled before Lib <coughs> in that quarter of the land whither he fled. 16. And when he had come to the plains of Ogosh, he gave battle unto Lib, and he smote upon him until he died. <coughs> Nevertheless, the brother of Lib, oh boy, that is driving me crazy. The brother of Lib, Lib did come against Coriantumr in the stead thereof. And the battle became exceeding sore. In the which Coriantumr fled again before the army of the brother of Lib. He's got a name, right? Oh yeah, here it is. Seventeen. Now the name of the brother of Lib was Shiz. Oh, I remember him. And it came to pass, still in 17. That Shiz pursued after Coriantumr. Man, he can't get a break. He knocks one down, another one pops up, man. And he did overthrow many cities, and he did slay both women and children, and did burn the cities. That's some serious shiz there, man. 18. And there went a fear of shiz throughout all the land. Yea, a cry went forth throughout the land. Who can stand before the army of Shiz? <clears throat> Behold, he sweepeth the earth before him. 19. And it came to pass. <sighs> that the people began to flock together in armies throughout all the face of the land. Twenty. And they were divided, and a part of them fled to the army of Shiz, and a part of them fled to the army of Coriantumr. No conscientious objectors, huh? Twenty-one. And so great and lasting had been the war and so long had been and so long had been the scene of bloodshed and carnage that the whole face of the land was covered with the bodies of the dead. <coughs> Twenty-two. And so swift and speedy was the war that there was none left to bury the dead. But they did march forth from the shedding of blood to the shedding of blood. More of the same. Uh, leaving the bodies of both men, women, and children strewed upon the face of the land to become a prey to the worms of the flesh. Nasty. 23. And the scent thereof went forth upon the face of the land. And that wasn't nice. Even upon all the face of the land. The entire continent? Ew. Ah. <sighs> Wherefore the people became troubled by day and by night because of the scent thereof. 24. Nevertheless, Shiz did not cease to pursue Coriantumr. 
for he had sworn to avenge himself upon Coriantumr of the blood of his brother, who had been slain, and the word of the Lord which came to Ether, that Coriantumr should not fall by the sword. Twenty-five. And thus we see that the Lord did visit them in the fullness of his wrath, and their uh, and their wickedness and abominations. I drank those, and prepared the way for their everlasting destruction. Hang on. This is really so dramatic, I don't know if I can handle it, man. Man, I thought, like, Robert E. Howard and Barry Sadler novels were intense. Damn! All right, I'm just fucking with you. This is pretty badly written, but nice try. Oh, abominations. Tasty. Twenty-six, and it came to pass. Good thing I'm ready. Oh. That shiz did pursue Coriantumr eastward, even to the borders of the seashore, and there he gave battle of the shiz for the space of three days magic number. Uh, 27. And so terrible was the destruction among the armies of Shiz that the people began to be frightened and began to flee before the armies of Coriantumr. And they fled to the land of Corihor and swept off the inhabitants before them, all them that would not join them. 28. And they pitched their tents in the valley of Corihor, and Coriantumr pitched his tents in the valley of Shur. Shur. Now, the valley of Shur was near the hill of Comnor, Wherefore Coriantumr did gather his armies together upon the hill of Kilcomnor, and did sound a trumpet unto the armies of Shiz to invite them forth to battle. That was ballsy. 29. And it came to pass. that they came forth, but were driven again, and they came the second time, and they were driven again the second time, and it came to pass in the same verse. That they came again the third time, magic numbers. The battle became exceeding sore. Thirty. And it came to pass. <sighs> that shiz smote upon Coriantumr that he gave him many deep wounds, and Coriantumr, having lost his blood, fainted and was carried away as though he was he were dead. Thirty one. Now the loss of men, women, and children on both sides was so great that Shiz commanded his people that they should not pursue the armies of Coriantumr. Wherefore they returned to their camp, and that's it for fourteen. That was pretty bitching, huh? Gotta admit that was dramatic. Stuff's happening, they're wrapping it up.
We're almost done. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having. I hope you learned something and you'll share it. Bye.